Why do I keep dropping my iPhone 13 mini? Hello and welcome back to Marcellus Reviews and thank you for subscribing if you have. And if you haven't subscribed, the button's just down there. Recently, my podcast co-host Rob asked quite an interesting question, which was, is the iPhone 13 mini too small? And that was in response to my latest accident with this phone, which involved the iPhone 13 mini and my 16 inch MacBook Pro. More on that story later, but that question did stop me in my tracks because it also referenced the time I accidentally threw this down the toilet and also when I inadvertently knocked it off a treadmill. So is it too small? I keep going on about how wonderful this phone is in terms of its size, but given how many scrapes I've got into with it, is it just not big enough? Today, I'm gonna to try and answer that question. Like everyone, I've got myself into a fair few scrapes over the years, I've scratched stuff, I've broken things, and I've dented more than my pride on more than one occasion. For instance, this is a photo of me having just hit myself in the face with a lighting tripod in this studio, but I don't actually consider myself to be that clumsy, particularly with tech. So for instance, if I've got a new phone or a new laptop or something, I'll always be very careful for quite a long period of time about where I put it on the table. I'll always make sure I put it down you know, kind of the rear side first or onto something soft. It's also why I wrap my MacBooks and iPads in lots of layers of protection before I put them in bags. And I'm also very careful to make sure they're not being squashed by other things. Now, if I ever see a phone or something expensive that is resting precariously on the end of a table, I'll always write it. So why have I dropped this iPhone 13 mini so many times? The first time was pretty straightforward, to be honest. I was at the gym, on the treadmill, and before I started running, I placed the iPhone in a towel on the little shelf on the treadmill. I got on with my run, did my normal boring 5K, and by the time I was finished, all sweaty and tired, all the rest of it, went to get a drink, came back to the treadmill, went to grab the towel, forgot the iPhone was there, you can guess what happened next. Then there was the toilet. And this isn't a disgusting story, I promise. I've told it on this channel before, but very, very quickly, it was an empty toilet, by the way, there was just water down there. But the where our toilet is upstairs in our bathroom, I know this is already too much information, but there is a towel rail to the right-hand side of the toilet. And it's kind of angled against the wall. So quite often I'll put my iPad or my phone just on that towel rail on the top of it, just so it's leaning against the wall and therefore can't fall off, can't be knocked off, you'd think. Turns out it can. I still don't know how I did this, but I swiveled round, flung my arm in the air, and caught the edge of the iPhone, which sent it flying into the air, almost in slow motion, and it flew through the air in the direction of the toilet, hit the rim of the toilet on the side of the phone there, and, yep, yeah, ended up in the pan. Then there was the MacBook Pro incident, and this makes me wince even thinking about it. So basically I was sat there working on my 16 inch MacBook Pro, and the phone was placed to the right hand side of it. Went to grab the phone, and as I grabbed it, the MagSafe wallet on the back slipped slightly, which meant I lost the purchase on the phone, and just as I was bringing it towards me, it just kind of fell out my hand and went smashing into my 16 inch MacBook Pro. I'll show you a short clip now of, not of the incident, thankfully I did not record it, it's not on file, but I will show you a very short clip of the damage created by that impact. And as you can see, it's not particularly terrible, but there is a little gouge taken out of it by this phone. Now bear in mind, after both the treadmill fall and also the toilet incident, there wasn't a ounce of damage on this phone anywhere. The aluminium band around the phone, no mark, no dent, nothing whatsoever. No scratch on the rear glass. There's only hairline scratches, which normally pick up on you know, phones when they're in your pocket and stuff on the screen itself. There was just no damage anywhere on the phone after those two incidents. So when it went crashing into my 16 inch MacBook Pro and caused the damage on the MacBook Pro itself, I just thought it would be inevitable that finally this phone would be damaged. No, nothing. I still can't really believe it. Even as I look at it today, there's just nothing on there. It's just, it looks pretty much, apart from those little hairline scratches on the screen, which I think are completely normal, it looks as new as the day I got it. And every year, Apple tells us that the latest iPhone is tougher, it's got better glass, it's harder to break, harder to smash. And I always take that with a pinch of salt because these things are still made out of aluminium, which can chip and get dented, and more crucially, glass, which can break. But there is something, I think, about this iPhone 13 mini and probably the entire iPhone 13 line that seems slightly more indestructible. So I'm curious, have you dropped your iPhone in a similar way, hopefully not the toilet, 
to me, and have you noticed, like me, that there just is not any damage on it whatsoever? Let me know about your iPhone 13 accidents in the comments, please. So back to the big question, is the iPhone 13 mini too small? No, I don't think it is. I think the problem I have had with this phone is actually this, the MagSafe wallet. Now I wrote a blog about this a little while ago, I'll link to it in the video description, where I called this the perfect MagSafe accessory. And I still maintain that's the case, it is superb. If you can get used to having just one, two, or a push three cards in your wallet, it's just a fantastic way to reduce your daily carry. But in that blog post, I talked about it being a fairly decent case of sorts as well. And although I did give the caveat that it's not actually a case, you know, it doesn't protect the entire phone, there's something about the fact that it protects the back that gives me a bit more reassurance. That's fine until incidents like the MacBook Pro thing happen and it slips off when you pick it up. Because the magnets, they're not bad. I wanna see, honestly, on the iPhone 14, it has to have better, stronger MagSafe magnets because they do slip. These things do slip. They don't fall off you know, completely all the time, but certain instances where, as I demonstrated with my MacBook Pro, just picking the phone up, it can slip off quite easily. So I don't think I'm dropping my iPhone 13 mini so regularly because it's so small. I think it's because I don't have a case on it. It is a lot slippier, certainly with this, but even without that, it's a slippy phone still. So I should have a case, and I would recommend that if you're gonna get the Mini in particular, get yourself a case just to avoid any possibility that you'll damage something else with this phone. For me, the iPhone 13 mini is still the best iPhone I've ever owned. If you're still thinking about buying one, trust me, you will not be disappointed. Just go and get it. And I think it's important to do that now if you're going to, because the rumors are that this is the last iPhone mini. We're probably not gonna see an iPhone 14 mini. That greatly saddens me, and I just don't wanna go big again with phones, really. Imagine what an iPhone 13 Pro Max would have done to my 16-inch MacBook Pro. I've been asking myself lots of questions recently, partly because there's very little tech news on the horizon at the moment, but if you wanna hear me wrestle with the question about whether or not I'm an Apple fanboy, keep watching for a link to that video. But in the meantime, thank you as always for watching, and I'll catch you next time.